let's create a simple trivia game in your first exercise. Let's see how to do that. All right, welcome back to the Java introduction here for Minecraft and Hightail modding. And this is actually a special tutorial right now because we're going to be looking at the first exercise you're going to be doing. So the idea is that you are supposed to create a simple trivia game. Now that the way that this works is that you should probably set aside around about 30 minutes plus the length of the video to really get through this. Um, depending on really how, depending on how early you are in your programming career, so to speak, uh, you might want to set out maybe even an hour, uh, just because this might be a little bit, well, more confusing if you want to try this yourself. I highly recommend you try to do this yourself. The way that this video is built is that I'm going to explain the exercise in just a moment, then I will sort of give you, you know, some time. You can basically pause the video, try to figure out some stuff. Then I will reveal the first clue. So sort of I'll give you like a little bit of a hint. And then I will also reveal a second clue. And then we're going to basically see my version of how I would have done it. Uh, this is also one thing where if your code doesn't exactly match mine, that's totally fine. If it works and it's, you know, properly done, then there's nothing wrong with it at all. So that's just one thing to keep in mind. And yeah, that's sort of the idea. Let's see what the actual program is that you are trying to do. So what we want to have is we want to define at least three questions and three answers. So, you know, think about what that means, right? In what way can we save a question? In what way might we save an answer? And then what we want to do is we prompt the user to type in their answer. So this might be an output of the question and then the answer using the scanner. Now this, of course, we have seen before in the output input video. So that is something to rewatch for this part here. And then you should use if else statements to check whether or not the answer is correct and then simply output this if it was correct. And if it's wrong, you should also tell the user the correct answer. And you should do this for at least three questions. That's the sort of idea. What you should do is use the topics that we have been discussing in the last couple of tutorials. If you are a little bit more advanced, you know some other tricks that you might be able to use here. I would say that that's that's not necessary. Basically only use the simpler stuff because of course there's multiple ways even with more complicated, well, basically data types to build this. You try to use the ones that we've been talking about and then there's one more bonus here and that is where we have a point total and each time you answer correctly, you basically give a point and then at the very end of this program, you basically put out a unique output for each of the scores that the user might have. Anything else is up to you. The questions are up to you. You can do anything you want. I will show you some questions and some answers in just a moment for the first sort of hint. And then there's two more important tips that I really need you to focus on right now. So when we read in something, we can read in next and we can also read in next line. We want to read in next. So you have seen me use the scanner.nextInt before where we have read in a number. And now if you want to read in a string as an answer, you should be using scanner.next. That's important. And when you have an answer and an input that are both strings, this might happen, right? So an input is the thing that I've read in from the scanner from the user. And the answer is the predefined answer that we of course also need to have. Then what we want to use is we want to use the user input that equals and then put the answer into these parentheses here. You can think of this as the same as this one where we say, hey, user input equals answer, right? Where we basically say, hey, is this equal to each other? This does not work. We need to use the equals here. So that's also an important thing. This might be a little bit confusing. Don't let that confuse you too much. It's just the idea that instead of this, we have to write this. Right now, hopefully you are equipped to create the simple trivia game. So I would say that well, I hope that the explanation here will suffice for you to understand what you should be doing. Just try out a bunch of stuff and I'm very much interested in what type of trivia game you come up with. They should all look fairly similar, but of course, something like the questions might always be a little bit different. So pause the video now and try for yourself. All right, hint number one. So let's take a look. Of course, when we are defining the questions, they should all be strings. So I'm going to copy over the three strings here, question one, question two, and question three. And then for the answers, you can of course also define strings. However, you can see that how many states does the US have, right? I actually put that as an integer because of course, there's no reason why we can't do that as well. So that would be the first hint. 
This is defining the questions and defining the answers. All right, on to the second hint right here. So let's actually see the question that is being output as well as the input and then one output right here. So what you will see here is of course the normal scanner. Like we've said, we're not gonna worry about it too much. We're just gonna know, okay, what we can do is we can do scanner.nextInt. And this is, as you can see, saved in the user input one here. And then we simply say, hey, if this is equal, your answer was correct else. So if this is not equal, then we're gonna say incorrect. And the correct answer was this. And with these two hints, if you have to use both of them, you should be able to finish the rest of the exercise here. So good luck. All right, here we are with the result, or let's say one possible solution of this. This is your last chance. If you want to try this out yourself, I really highly recommend this. Otherwise, we will be going through the code now. Okay, so first of all, we have the three questions here defined as strings. That, of course, makes absolute sense. There's no real other way to define your questions. And then the answers, I actually have defined one answer as an integer. You could, in theory, also just make a string out of this. That would also work totally fine. However, I decided to use an integer here. Then we have the points. This is for the bonus one, where we just increment the points right here. And of course, we have the scanner. Should be also self-explanatory. That's just for inputting stuff. The rest doesn't interest us. And then we output the first question. And then we wait for the user input. So we're waiting for the next integer that is being put into the actual terminal. And then we press enter. And then this is, you know, saved in the user input integer here. And then we say, hey, is this equal to the answer? If it is, then we're just going to say correct. And there's actually one more thing here. And that is this. Then we increase the points total. And then we also put out, you have this many points. And if the answer is incorrect that we've given, then we say incorrect and we give the correct answer just outputting it like this. And here, this is just something I've done. I've put in a new print line, just so basically a empty print line so that it prints in the next line afterwards. Then it prints the second question. And then as you can see, we're waiting for the input once again, this time a string. And here you can see I'm using user input dot equals answer. This is exactly what I meant when I said this in the beginning with the important tips here. And once again, if this is true, then we just increase the points total. We're going to say, hey, correct. And this is how many points you have. Otherwise, we just print that out. And basically, this is pretty much exactly the same as before. We simply say, hey, is this equal? Then we print this out and then we'll be fine. And now at the end here, we also have the points total with unique lines for each of the different points that we can have. So we're going to say points is equal to three. And then we say, hey, you are a genius. Everything's correct. And oh, you're pretty smart. Only one mistake, two mistakes, you know. You got everything wrong. And then at the end here, I also have sort of a like a little thing that you can't really get to. And this is how did you even get negative points in this example? This as, isn't actually possible, but you could do some sort of Easter egg in there, right? Where you sort of answer the questions completely wrong or something like that, where you put in like minus 50 here. And then you have a different basically point total at the end where that is made, maybe negative or something like that. So that is also something that you could do. So what I'm going to do is now I'm going to play this for just um, as you can see as an example here. So how many states does the USA have? Of course, have the answers here right now. Let's just put in 50 and then you see your answer is correct. What is the capital of the United Kingdom? It is, of course, London. And that is also correct. And then the chemical symbol for iron is FE. And we're just going to make this so that we have everything correct. Your answer was correct. You have three points. You're a genius. Everything is correct. As you can see, this is well one example of this how you can use almost all of the things that we've been discussing previously and sort of put them all together. And uh, yeah, that's that's a, actually a really good example. And I hope that this was sort of useful to you to see an example and have sort of an exercise where you can just try out some stuff yourself. I really recommend doing a lot of things on your own as well. Just trying out, yeah, how can I use this if statement? Let's output this, let's output that. But just a little bit, like a good hour or so, just working on this can be really useful and also really fun, right? So building something like this, you know, this is pretty much already a game. Is it like a great game? I mean, no, but you've built this yourself. You can be very proud of yourself, to be honest. Right? The code is, of course, available in the description below in a GitHub repository or in a gist as well. So you can basically compare what you've done with 
everything right here with this solution. Otherwise, this would be it for this tutorial right here. I hope you found this useful and you learned something new. If you did, I would of course appreciate a like and don't forget to subscribe for more tutorials just like this one. So yeah, 